Good afternoon, I am Mr. Ish. You are joining me for this video here, the double of the day video on angles. We are looking here at two questions. As is always the case, each video has two relevant questions in preparation for the type of questions you see on a variety of standardized tests, ACT, SAT, GRE, GMAT. They all employ questions with regards to angles, a very hot and important topic to know for those types of tests. In this question over here, we have a representation given over here. We have line 1, line 2, line 3, and then line 4. We know that based on the side over there, these two lines are parallel. This right here is a notation for parallel lines. Line 1 is parallel to li line 2. With regards to this line right here, line 3, we know line 3 must be perpendicular to both lines 2 and lines 1. Why? Because we have a right angle here. The right angle can be transferred across in all of these dimensions because of the properties of corresponding angles. You can send it across and you know that this perpendicular line is affecting both lines 1 and 2. When you look at line 4, it cuts across at an angle of 30 degrees. You have to find angles A, B, C, and D. You can use the property of opposite angles right here. This must be opposite and equal to that because D and this 30 are opposite to one another both opposite in terms of this vertex over here intersection of these two lines we know that D must equal to 30 degrees that's a good fact and then we know that D and C are supplementary angles two angles which add up and equal to 180 if D is 30 then C must be 180 minus 30 and it must make it 150 degrees you can also use a property of corresponding angles and the Z angle effect. You see this? We have a little bit of a Z angle going on here, Z. When you have two parallel lines and a line which cuts across these two angles, which look like in the form of a Z angle, they're always equal. That means A must be equal to D, which must make A equal to 30 degrees. And lastly, to determine B, you know that the sum of the angles in this triangle must be 180. If D is 30 and you have a 90, that's 120, that makes B 180 minus 120 and it makes it 60 degrees. Another good check is that the A and B are complementary. A plus B must add up to give you 90 degrees and that's a good check. If A is 30 and B is 60, they equal to 90 and indeed that's true. So in summation, you have D is equal to 30 degrees, C is 150 by means of supplementary angle effect a and D are opposite and corresponding angles are 30 degrees equal to one another and B you could determine by means of the sum of the angles in a triangle equal to 180 or by means of a complementary angle effect and all of this question is done. The second and last question for this video will prove to be a very beneficial question in terms of the preparation that it provides. It deals with the property of similar triangles. We have a triangle here, a large triangle ABC within which you have a smaller triangle D, E, and C. We know from this information here that segment AC is equal to BC. This entire segment is equal to that segment. Therefore, we're dealing here with isosceles triangles. If this large segment is equal to that segment, then it means by property of similar triangles, this smaller triangle must be isosceles triangle and the larger triangle must be isosceles. That is, these segments are equal as they are shown. We also know that this angle C is equal to 40 degrees right over here. This right here is 40 degrees. We have to find X, Y, Z, W angles. We're looking for this angle here, Y, W, and Z. We know that this right here is a quadrilateral, looks like a trapezoid. The sum of the angles in here must equal 360 degrees. Given only this 40 degrees, how can we determine everything else? And it has very much to do with the properties of similar triangles and isosceles triangles. If this is 40, you can easily determine the other two angles of this smaller triangle. And let's draw it out over here. We have a 40, we have an X here and an X here. 40 plus 2X, because all the angles of a triangle equal 180, you can solve for this X. X is equal to 140 divided by 2, 70 degrees. So we know these angles here are 70 degrees. Let's draw this triangle here again, and let's make the information we know, and we put it in. We have 40, 70, and 70. When you're dealing with a similar triangle, two similar triangles, what you see over here, it corresponds very well to what you see down here. These are corresponding angles. This 70 must equal to this 70 by means of the property of corresponding angles due to the similarity that comes about. This right here is 70. This here must be 70. So we know now that Z and W are 70 and 70. 
These angles are easy to find right here because you have a supplementary angle effect here, straight line. That must be 110 and this right here must be 110 because these two angles must add up to 180. So now we know X and Y are 110 each. So X is 110 degrees, Y is 110 degrees, Z is, is 70 degrees and W is a 70 degrees. And you should be able to make sure everything is good. If you look at the small triangle, 40 plus 70 plus 70 is 180. Look at this large triangle, this 40 plus this 70 plus 70 is 180. So it checks out in terms of the internal angles of the both triangles equaling 180. And then check out the trapezoid. 110 plus 110 plus 70 plus 70 will equal 360. So everything works out. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Stay tuned. Many more on the way. Thank you for watching.